Hello my friends, welcome dreamers, and today is Vlogtober day number four. Now this one is going to be a little different, it is, and this is a reminder to burn that pink candle. Now if that resonates with you, let me know down there below, and if it doesn't, let me share a little something. Um, I'm going to talk about Irma Bombeck. She wrote a book, If I Had My Life to Live Over, Okay. And she also wrote many other books. She did. She worked on lots of different newspapers and she was like a humorist. Um, and she has passed away. She couldn't fight her last, I think it was kidney polycystic um, disease. She, she couldn't survive that, but she did previously um, fight cancer and beat it. But at the end of the day, she left a lot of things for us to read, to enjoy, and to really take into motion in our own lives. Now, when I said burn that pink candle, you'll understand why. I'm going to look over here. I'm going to read. Okay. Now, it says the following was written by the late Irma Bombeck after she found out that she had a fatal disease. And the book is If I Had My Life to Live Over Again. If I had my life to live over again, I would have talked less and listen more. I would have invited friends over to dinner, even if the carpet was stained and the sofa was faded. I would have eaten the popcorn in the good living room mm -hmm, and worried much less about the dirt when someone wanted to light that fire in the fireplace. I would have taken the time to listen to my grandfather ramble about his youth. I would never have insisted the car windows be rolled up on a summer day because my hair had just been teased and sprayed. I would have burned that pink sculpted candle like a rose before it melted in storage. I would have sat on the lawn with my children and not worried about the grass stains. I would have cried and laughed less while watching television and more while watching life. I would have had shared more of the responsibility carried by my husband. I would have gone to bed when I was sick instead of pretending that the earth would go into a holding pattern if I wasn't there for the day. I would never have bought anything just because it was practical, wouldn't, wouldn't show soil, or was guaranteed to last a lifetime. Instead of wishing away nine months of pregnancy, I'd had cherished every moment and realized the wonderment growing inside of me was the only chance in life to assist God in a miracle. When my kids kissed me impetuously, I would never have said later, now go get and washed up for dinner. There would have been more I love, you, I love yous and more I'm sorry. But mostly given another shot at life, I would have seized every minute. Look at it and really see it. Live it and never give it back. Now, of course, there's more to this. But I wanted to share that with you. Because for some reason, I thought about that candle. Now, the way I had came across these books was while I was visiting um, Puerto Rico as a child and I would go and stay with different family members and I remember staying at my my uncle and my aunt's house and they lived in Barranquita meaning they lived in the country like up kind of like a little bit on the mountainous side and um, they had every type of fruit tree imaginable that could be planted. My aunt, she planted everything. I mean, you could literally just go from morning until night by eating what was what was planted 
on their property. They had a small waterfall in the back, so it would go down like this, and then the waterfall would go down the back of the property line. They had chickens, they had roosters, so you would have fresh eggs. They had um, the ones that would freak me out, the tree lizards always freaked me out. Oh my gosh, they scared me to death because they were huge. I mean, huge. <laughs> they almost looked like Komodo dragons that were that big. And um, they had pigs and you name it. Every now and then there would be a loose boar. So you'd have to be really careful and go inside when the boars would come around. Because there were wild boars. So you would have to be careful. Well, it had been like a day or two and I was feeling a little... Um, you know, I was bored. I was a kid. I weren't have the kids there or anything, but I was spending, I think, like four or five days there, right? So I had already walked the property, looked at all the trees, tasted some of the fruits, and they had vegetables growing as well. They did. And it was hot, very hot. As you know, Puerto Rico is in the Caribbean, right on the equator. So it was hot and I wanted to stay in, but I was bored. There was nothing really to do. They didn't have air conditioning. Um, they had window units that you would only turn on at night because it's very, very expensive. Electricity there is very expensive. So the only thing you normally would have running, if anything, would be a, a ceiling fan or a floor fan to keep you cool. And the only time you turn on the air conditioning, the window unit would be at night. And as soon as you wake up, you turn it off immediately. Well, I remember my uncle felt bad for me. Adil Einhead was one of my favorite uncles. I loved him. He was one of the he was one of the sweetest people. Smart, so smart. And always was so happy to see everyone. I've never saw him in a bad mood. Never. Never. He was always smiling, loving, always had a good word, always interested in what you had to say. It was just, he was one of those people you always just wanted to be around. Well, he went looking around and he came carrying out a box of books. And these were all paperback books. And you could tell they were very well loved, very well read. You could tell by all the crinkled up pages and the curled up ends and turned pages in between. And he said, mira, ahí está lo libro. Go, the books are over there. I brought you some books for you to read. Pick some out. So I went through the box just very slowly, you know, because I didn't have a whole lot to do. And I started savoring the moments of when new things would come my way. So I took my time with the box and I laid out certain books according to my interest. And the two armor bound back books caught my interest. I immediately started to read them and devour them and laugh. And, oh my gosh, she's such a good writer. If you ever come across her books or if you order them, you will really and truly enjoy yourself. But a lot of it stayed with me. A lot of it stayed with me till this very day. And I'm 52 years old now. And that was when I was, I don't know, 12, 14 years old, maybe. Her writings were just that prominent and that important to me that they stayed with me. Well, I felt the need to share it with you because sometimes we forget to burn that paint candle. Sometimes we don't stop to go ahead and receive that love and give that love back. Sometimes we're so caught up in the things to do list that we don't stop, and look around and just take in life. We blink and a whole year has gone by with not too much to show for it. Going to work, coming home, having a meal, going to sleep, doing it over and over again. I think we all need to start living a little, enjoying life more, and um, enjoying God's fruits. There's so many beautiful things to see just sitting outside and taking it in. So happy Vlogtober, and I hope you do something special. Bye.